Hello, and welcome to Capital Insight. I'm State Representative Kevin Mannix from Salem, and I'm your host for this program. Capital Insight is designed to give our audience an opportunity to develop a little additional insight into some of the people, events, programs, and policies involving our state government here in Salem. Our guest today is a woman who has worked her way up through government and is now Deputy Director of the Economic Development Department of the State of Oregon, Carlene Jackson. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Thank you. I was taking a look at some of the background information on you, and I've mentioned to you earlier, one of the things we like to do is try to give our viewers some opportunity to learn something about people in government, and you're certainly in a very important position. Um, I'd like to take you back a little ways. You're a graduate of Oregon City High School? Yes, that's correct. Then you went off to school to the south after that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I uh, went to uh, California to college. Uh, started first in San Diego and then transferred up to San Francisco State and got my uh, bachelor's degree there in uh, elementary education, actually. Then you went into teaching for a while. I did. I taught for 10 years and uh, in various elementary schools in uh, both California and in Oregon. And then my husband and I uh, purchased um, a ranch um, out of Malala, between Malala and Silverton, and uh, moved back up into this area. And I taught um, at Mount Angel College for a couple of years and supervised their Head Start program there, and then transferred from there into the state and started working. About when did you start working for the state? About 1973, so... You've been there 19 been years? It's been a while, yes, yes. <laughs> now, you have worked in various positions, actually, with economic development, uh, uh, taking a look back. Can you give us some idea of the things that you've done there? Well, I really have... Um, only worked in the one position in economic As development, but in, a, in, in, but in um, in state government, I started out as a training coordinator in the executive department, and then I transferred from there um, into the budget and management division and worked first as a management analyst where we would go out and conduct studies at the request of the governor or the legislature or uh, agency heads and, and do an analysis of how well they're managing and then come back and make a report and a recommendation on improvement and for efficiencies in state agencies. And then I transferred on into the budget side and became a budget analyst and then um, budget uh, senior budget analyst and budget supervisor in the executive department. So, so basically you've wended your way in and out of, uh, I'll say, the corridors of bureaucratic that's, power. Uh, yes, that's, uh, that's true. And probably, uh, uh, I'm not sure if uh, your viewers know a lot about what budget people do, but we're really responsible for um, pulling together the governor's budget and then making uh, recommendations to the governor not only on budget but program and policy issues as well and and uh, then presenting that budget once it's uh, determined to both the uh, legislature and uh, first the governor and then the legislature for funding so well how long have you been deputy director of economic development uh, since 1988 and uh, during those four years uh, we've seen a lot of changes going on in Oregon in terms of uh, where government's going financially and the like. But uh, before we get into that, uh, I'd like to ask you a couple more questions about you as an individual. Okay. Um, what kind of interests do you have, hobbies, uh, activities? Okay. I love to fish, love to uh, ride horses. I've had a horse since I was uh, 10 years old and have been involved in 4-H. Uh, um, and uh, just uh, enjoy um, horseback riding. We have three horses now, and we have some cattle and a few sheep and horses on our ranch in Malala. And uh, my grandparents migrated out to Oregon uh, in the early 1900s from Kansas, and um, on my, my maternal grandparents landed in Bend, uh, Bend, Oregon, in Central Oregon, they had a farm off of the Tumalo Project there, and my mom went to Tumalo Elementary School and graduated from Redmond High School, and so always had horses and uh, participated in in events uh, in the Central Oregon area, and then we grew up kind of spending our summers in that area. And as kids, we lived over on the Willam in the Willamette Valley side in Oregon City area, Jennings Lodge area, but. 
um, have always liked horses. My dad's side of the family came from Pendleton, so and migrated down the down into Portland from there, and also came from Kansas originally. So we have kind of quite a history in, in not only in Oregon but with uh, rural rural Oregon as well. So well, that's handy to know. If, well, you're, I'll say to some extent, then you're a ranch woman at heart. That's very true. But also, I would think a lot of Oregonians who are, say, from Eastern Oregon or Central Oregon, they always think of government as some sort of faceless bureaucracy. But uh, I guess as evidence in your situation, there are real people there who are yes, trying true. to deliver a service to the that's citizens. That's true. That's true. And really have some empathy and understanding, I think, of the, a lot of the issues that some of them face. So. When you deal with dollars and cents, do you, do you try to keep that in mind, the who's really out there and what we're trying to do? Yes, and coming from a very small community, um, we uh, live up above Scotts Mills and Markham in a very small area, a uh, rural area, and, you know, I kind of try to measure decisions that I make based on what, how that would affect some of my neighbors and people that I, I know uh, are struggling to just make ends meet and, and uh, keep, uh, keep the farm, so. Well, that Scott's Mills, uh, Markham area is, well, it must be at least half an hour, 45 minute commute each time That's for you. true. It's about uh, 45 minutes. So if any citizens want to be critical and say that somehow government doesn't understand the real world, you actually live in the real world. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> and you drive into our capital every day. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about the Economic Development okay. Department and how that developed. Can you give us a little bit of background about how it was put together, what the history is on the department? Sure. Um, it started um, um, about, oh, I think it was the early or mid-60s when the, when the agency actually was put together. It really... Um, operated using general funds for a number of years and as a result um, didn't really take off and a lot of the programs didn't really take off and really become very visible until um, the 1985 with the passage of the um, the initiative that the uh, the uh, citizens put forth for the lottery and the idea and the fact that that uh, that initiative emphasized that uh, economic that the lottery funds would go for economic development that act alone really um, uh, pushed uh, the uh, efforts of our department and really expanded the efforts of our department let me and, interrupt uh, you for a minute and uh, and observe that I hear from a lot of my constituents that, oh, we thought the lottery was for education. And I have okay. to remind them, no, wait a minute, the constitutional provision says the lottery That's will correct. be used for economic development. A lot of the PR that was put out by proponents of the lottery said, gee, we can use some of this money or a lot of this money to build educational institutions, colleges, universities. And somehow the perception developed that, oh, voting for the lottery right. means the money right. goes to education. Right. But uh, it actually only goes indirectly in the sense that many times we can build institutional structures That's for true. education. That's can true. Can you can you pick up on that in terms of what the lottery is really being used okay, for? Okay. Yes. It's um, we have uh, a number a number of uh, major programs that affect I'm sure a number of your viewers. We uh, we uh, have what is called a regional strategies program that where we give uh, grants to uh, both. Uh, um, businesses and communities, but primarily communities, uh, for uh, a number of uh, projects that would deal, uh, help to develop a specific industry that the community has identified as their major um, thrust. Uh, it might be agriculture, it might be um, um, high tech, it might be uh, forest products, it might be tourism. Um, and those are, um, we've funded projects all over the state uh, under that program. Um, projects that they may be familiar with would be um, the Portland Convention Center, the Oregon Convention Center in Portland, the um, uh, Oregon Trail Interpretive Center in Baker City that was recently. All those new centers are That's right, and then the Oregon um, um, uh, aquarium, uh, coastal aquarium, uh, museum, uh, all those kinds of projects um, that help to uh, either um, uh, emphasize tourism or um, an agricultural um, 
uh, emphasis. I think Marion County, the the um, the counties around uh, this area, around Salem, have emphasized agriculture and have received over the years almost uh, four or five million dollars in that area. Let me pause for a moment and mention to uh, our audience that you're with us on Capital Insight. I'm State Representative Kevin Mannix from Salem. I am your host, and our guest today is the Deputy Director of the Department of Economic Development, Carlene Jackson. I'd like to mention to you also, if you have any questions or concerns at any time, feel free to write to me at Capital Insight, H395, State Capital, Salem, Oregon, 97310. And we'll continue now with uh, Mrs. Jackson in terms of... Uh, economic development, the programs okay. that you were just okay. talking about. I'd like to pause for a moment again in terms of, of the programs and, and point out that the lottery dollars are actually uh, collected or overseen by the Lottery Commission. That's correct. And then that money is appropriated by the legislature, but most of the appropriations, or, or a good deal of them, you can straighten me out on this, go to the Economic Development Department for the programs where you fund these different projects. Can you explain a little bit about how that process works, how you make those decisions? Sure. Um, a number of our programs, um, like our Special Public Works Fund program, which is, a, is a, provides infrastructure um, projects for mostly communities, um, municipalities and counties. Uh, we've done a number of large projects in the city of Silverton and Aurora and helping them to get water lines or sewer and water lines or infrastructure in place so that they can then bring a business into the community. And um, a number of those dollars um, are really processed, reviewed, the projects are handled by our staff. They're handled internally by our staff. They're uh, analyzed and then the decisions are made either by our director or the governor. Um, we have um, other projects though or other funds that come through us that just kind of flow through our agency and then go immediately on out to to some other entity um, for expenditures. And for example, we um, uh, have some pass-through dollars that go to the uh, Wood Products Competitive Corporation to help with secondary wood products or value-added uh, wood products businesses throughout the state. Would and that be like furniture or cabinets? Yes, it is, like where they take the, the, the wood and process it into an uh, entity that then sells so that we benefit uh, from the, uh, the, labor, the labor costs as well and from employment as well. Well, I'm curious about uh, how this would come together. You mentioned the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center, and actually one has opened, or and there's another one being pro established now. Or can you tell me a little bit about how you would fit in on funding something like that? Is that something where people put together the project and come to economic development? How would right. that work? Let me let me use the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center as an example because this was really uh, one that we're really really proud of. We. We, um, they, Baker City brought the concept to us, to the governor primarily, but to uh, our department and the governor, and uh, presented uh, this idea that they really wanted in, in preparation, certainly for the, uh, the, uh, the, the celebration, a 200-year celebration, to um, begin doing, uh, to look at doing something like an interpretive center. And um, we, bought the idea and we put the first dollars down and we didn't pay for the entire center but the idea that our dollars went on the table first drew and leveraged a lot of other dollars both federal dollars as well as local uh, dollars from the community from the businesses and the citizens within the community and so that project that several million dollar project was really funded but it was funded primarily because we took a commitment first with our dollars and then the others followed and so it's kind of a good example of how we try to use our money to then leverage others and sometimes we leverage anywhere from for every dollar we put in we can leverage seven ten fifteen times the amount that we've put in to a project by it being um, used uh, to bring in other dollars that are is that a substantial so, consideration when you're looking at funding something how much leveraging you'll get sometimes out of it. it is and it depends and sometimes it's written into our administrative rules uh, for the particular um, uh, program that we might be administering with a lottery dollars. It's not in all of them, but uh, in our special public works fund monies, we often look at how much is then leveraged before we'll we can uh, we'll 
uh, issue monies out. So in some instances, it is a major factor. Now, you were talking about regional strategies before, and uh, you might want to explain how that applies to different regions and how that policy process was developed, because uh, I think our viewers would be interested in that. Okay. Well, the, the policy is, is, is changing uh, somewhat right now, but initially uh, it really uh, um, surfaced under Governor Goldschmidt, um, and it was a concept or an idea whereby we would uh, really emphasize strengthening the uh, economic capacities within uh, the various regions throughout the state and really uh, try to um, uh, also emphasize that um, and encourage um, partnerships out in throughout the state so that rather than just divide up a pot of money to 36 counties and then just send the money out and allow them to just do uh, just what they wanted to do with the money. We had them decide what they wanted to do, so it started first from them, but to work uh, to see if they could develop some partnerships with like counties, counties within their region that would have similar needs and uh, identify similar kinds of concerns as it related to strengthening their economic base. And so um, we, we worked very strongly at developing those partnerships and groups, and we, we feel pretty good about uh, the results of a lot of, the, a lot of the strategies that not only came in but have been funded over the past several years. We're in the third round with the program, um, and are now looking at maybe shifting a little more of the responsibility for approving the various projects back to the to the local entities, which well, would be them. There was something of a political issue on that. I know Marion County was a little uncomfortable yes. with the regional strategy process because of their feeling that they wanted to talk, for instance, more about tourism and they were being pressed more towards agriculture. And that's an interesting philosophical debate because when you look at Marion County's position in agriculture, that's a, it's a very that's significant true. part of the economy. That's true. But uh, so there's some sensitivity now to trying to say, well, regional strategies are important, let's get the regions together, but uh, let's also let them have a little bit more say about how this is going to work. Is that how I'm reading, I'm that's reading correct. it right? That's correct. That's correct. And we've been working with the Associated Oregon um, Counties, uh, some of their leadership, and, and really uh, coming to the table with some um, adjustments to the uh, to the program that would be uh, a little more palatable and really make the I think the uh, the program work a little more effectively for for the various regions throughout the state so if you're trying to define a mission statement for the economic development department uh, and not necessarily an official one but from sure, your perspective sure. how would you how would you see the mission okay um, uh, let me be without just answering that just very very quickly let me back up and indicate that we have a strategic economic strategic plan in Oregon and it's and in that there is a mission statement and the statement says um, that we will work to create jobs for Oregonians that we will work to promote and protect the uh, quality of life in Oregon and we will work for um, to improve the competitiveness the globalization the international uh, ization in Oregon and um, I guess if I were um, going to kind of modify that a little bit and take it more to a vision statement for us which I think the governor has also um, indicated the same and then our department it would be to really say not just create jobs but really create what is called quality employment or quality jobs we're saying that it's not just enough to just create a job but you really need to look at the type of jobs that are being created that will bring in an adequate uh, earning level for a family to exist comfortably in this state. And so we have changed those a little bit by saying quality employment, rural development, rather uh, tied rather than quality of life, but rural development with the emphasis that if, if we can uh, help to strengthen our rural communities and our um, rural regions, then um, we will have bring that quality of life throughout the state. And then finally, the internationalization. And I think that we um, all agree that improving our competitiveness in the world market is, is very critical for Oregonians. So. I'm going to take a cue from the rural development uh, okay. concept. But, I, but first, I'm going to mention to our viewers that you're with us on Capital Insight. 
I'm Representative Kevin Mannix from Salem, and uh, I'm your host for this program. If you ever have any comments or questions or suggestions, please feel free to write to me at Capital Insight, H395, State Capital, Salem, Oregon, 97310. Our guest today is Carlene Jackson, who is the Deputy Director of Economic Development for the State of Oregon. And uh, the cue I was just talking about was when you were talking about rural development, uh, something came up in my <coughs> mind, and that has to do with the whole question of land conservation and development, uh, LCDC, a uh, question of growth in rural areas as opposed to urban areas. Does the Department of Economic Development try to stay out of that? Uh, how do you fit in with the issues of growth in rural communities? We fit in a lot, <laughs> and we fit in well. We, no, we don't try to stay out of that. We uh, work very closely with um, um, LCDC, and we work very closely with most of the natural resource agencies, including uh, the Department of Environmental Quality and the Division of State Lands and Water Resources Department. We see um, uh, Forestry Department and Fish and Wildlife. All of those uh, those um, natural resource agencies um, are, are very critical for us to do our job, and particularly the land uh, um, land use issues, primarily because um, if we, you know, we could do our job and recruit um, thousands of new jobs into um, a small community somewhere in, in Oregon, or can help a community, um, help a business that's in a community already expand. But if there are no um, ready industrial sites there that are zoned correctly and um, have addressed the, any wetland issues or have addressed any environmental issues that might be there, then it's then we've um, wasted our time. And so it's very, we see uh, both uh, land use issues and industrial siting certainly as a, a major issue for us. And, and um, the governor has uh, supported that in um, her budget this next time around as well. So, Do you have some formal mechanism for working out those, uh, those issues, or do you do it informally depending on the situation working with various agencies? Um, well, uh, both. We have a, an individual on our staff um, uh, that is our, our environmental specialist, we call them. Um, and that person uh, meets regularly, uh, weekly, with all of the natural resource agencies uh, and the governor's uh, assistant for natural, re natural resources. Um, and so that person's a key player on all of the policy discussions from all of those agencies uh, right at the beginning uh, of, of any process. And then um, our regional business development officers, of which we have uh, six regions and six officers throughout the state, um, they work very closely with um, regional and field staff of each one of those um, those agencies uh, as they begin trying to assist businesses one-on-one -on -one in either expansion or recruitment efforts that they're involved in. So, uh, and that's more of the kind of the informal, I think, process. More of the formal process is the fact that we have a person that, that meets uh, regularly with them and is involved uh, in, in all of the, uh, the issues that surface in that area, so. And we've talked a little about geographic areas and er I'll, I'll say rural versus urban areas, right. that sort of thing. How about the business community itself? How does uh, your department relate to that community and work with that community? Um, well, we work uh, on a number of, uh, uh, we have uh, a commission that has um, representatives from the business community. We have a business finance committee that, that makes decisions about um, uh, our business loans and from our business loan programs. And um, the, they're very much tied into uh, our tourism council. Uh, is made up of people from that industry and businesses. Our film and video uh, board is made up of uh, individuals as well. We have advisory committees that we often plug in to the business community uh, on as well. And then we're, um, uh, we try to be very active players uh, in a number of the uh, um, like the Associated Oregon Industries um, and some of the leadership from some of the business community as well. We work very closely, certainly, with our regional business development officers, with the local businesses in the, within the regions, and uh, tie uh, directly in with, um, with uh, business leaders within the various communities there. 
Now, budget proposals have been made. The governor has come out with her uh, mandated recommended budget and her optional recommended budget. I'll describe them that way. Um, what is your perception of how economic development has come out in this process and, and how you're going to do, and, and I know we're projecting right now the session right. doesn't start till January, but uh, how do things look for the Economic Development Department in terms of the budgetary picture and plans for the next couple of years? Okay. Well, I think for the, for the, the governor uh, really tried to send a message to Oregonians uh, through our department by really very strongly supporting economic development. Uh, her budget um, um, is um, uh, is very um, uh, supportive of a lot of our existing programs, particularly our lottery funded programs, and in fact has um, enhanced um, not only enhanced some of our existing programs, but has um, uh, very strongly supported some new programs that are, will be coming in uh, in workforce and in uh, drinking um, drinking water and uh, wastewater um, uh, infrastructure financing. So she uh, very strongly supported us and we're uh, uh, hoping that we can carry that forward. We, we feel that one of the problems um, for us will be to, and one of the challenges for us will be to uh, convince uh, legislators that um, that we are um, one of the avenues to helping to solve the problem. That this is, uh, you know, if we have any problems with uh, retrenchments or cutbacks or or uh, problems with um, with taxing or bringing in revenues that our department and a lot of our programs are the ones that are out there helping to strengthen and generate, uh, strengthen the economy and generate those revenues. So but, when you're doing the pump priming, you're part of the priming process because you're going to pump up the economy and economic development. That's correct. Which in turn brings us back to if the economy is healthy, then there are, there is a flow of tax dollars from that that allows That's government correct. to do its job. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, I think one of the, uh, you mentioned earlier about the lottery uh, monies being perceived to go for education. I think probably our biggest challenge next time will be the fact that um, there will be um, keeping, uh, keeping the lottery funds flowing to our department will probably be the biggest challenge, I guess. Do you see a some, I guess it's hard to foresee right now. I'm, I'm one of the people that's kind of raised the question of whether or not we should dedicate part of the lottery money or all of it or whatever to education right. uh, to fulfill the perceptions of the voters perhaps or to help us deal with our economic in terms of budget and tax issues. Sure. Uh, the, um, in, in terms of the flow of things going on in the capital right now, has anything developed where there may be some sort of a compromise where a portion of the uh, economic development funds are, are shifted back to education. Have you heard anything about that? I haven't. Um, in the past, uh, when I was um, over in the executive department in the, in the budget section, I happened to be the senior budget analyst at the time that the lottery um, um, initiative was passed and I was responsible for really helping at least from the governor's standpoint put the program together um, and uh, identify some um, the criteria for um, making decisions about uh, the, the first budget that came out on lottery. And from the beginning of time, there's always been this concern about uh, wanting to, whenever there were problems with education, wanting to shift those dollars over. Uh, in the past, there really hasn't been, um, you know, the lottery brought in um, uh, anywhere from maybe uh, 90 to 100 million dollars uh, over a biennia and it really wasn't a significant amount enough anyway to make a difference in the education the the one billion or 1.1 billion dollars needed for uh, for education. But uh, now that's component. changing with the advent of video poker. I understand we may be talking 200 million in the biennium. That's correct. I, well, I think the governor's budget projects uh, close to 300 million for the biennium. So that's that. That's what pushes the issue. As I mentioned that, and that's something we'll have to look at in the future, I also have to mention that our time has run out. Okay. And so I'd like to thank our viewers for joining us on Capital Insight. Carlene Jackson from the uh, Deputy Director of the Department of Economic Development was our guest. And thank you for joining us.
paid for and authorized by Citizens for Mannix, 2003 State Street, Salem, Oregon, 97301.